I want to look with you at one of the hardest passages in the official SAT study guide. And it is worth getting, okay? That's the book, big one from the College Board. And I'm going to pause here so that you can, A, get the book, and if you have it, go to page 416. This is the first reading comp in test two. Read it, 75 lines, then unpause. I'll be here. Okay, welcome back. If you have read the passage at test two, section one, or on the book, page 416, you're encountering a pretty old passage, 160 plus years old. Why the SAT is afflicting students with this kind of literature, I don't know. But it's there. You can expect at least one passage that's 80 years old or more. This is twice as old and from the UK. But we can deal with it because we can really scrutinize questions and the answer choices and apply them to the specific words, it's just English, that are in the text. If when you were reading, you didn't quite get a handle on a paragraph or even two, well, A, you're not alone. I'm three times your age and I didn't get a handle on it either. Also, you can go back for details when necessary. I want to do that with you on three detailed questions that are on page 417. Let's look at number two. Now, it's a main purpose question, but it's the main purpose of one sentence. The purpose of the opening sentence of the passage. The right answer is B. Provide context, that means the surrounding, useful in understanding the narrator's emotional state. You have to like this because there's enough stuff about emotional state crying out that I had been doubly desirous. I should have endured in silence. That's a lot of emotional that backs up that first sentence. Now, what's wrong? with the wrong answers. We do this, www, what's wrong with, and let's look at A, establish the narrator's perspective on a controversy. Good, except for the last word. And remember that final words or final phrases in answer choices, kill them. And they're loaded to be bad at the end so that the SAT might catch some people who are not careful. Don't read to the end. Not you. So that last word, controversy, that is not appropriate. A controversy is a social issue. It's a wide dispute. This author at best is internalizing some friction. Internal at best, that would not be a controversy. Let's go to answer C. Author symbolic representation of Edward Crimsworth's plight. Ooh. Edward Crimsworth is the narrator's employer. I don't think anywhere, certainly not in this first sentence, but I don't think anywhere in the whole passage are they really representing Edward Crimsworth's plight. This instead is about the narrator's plight, not Edward Crimsworth's. Finally, D. Contrast the narrator's good intentions with his malicious conduct. There's no malicious conduct, okay? This is not a narrator who has, <clears throat> as in Edgar Allan Poe writing 30 years earlier, knifed his evil companion. This is not a narrator who even has sinister thoughts about doing bad. He's bummed that he hasn't taken it upon himself to change his situation. But don't extrapolate in Edgar Allan Poe fashion to something the author hasn't done. Let's go to number three. During the course of the first paragraph, the narrator's focus shifts from first paragraph once again, and let's go one by one. I'm not going to identify the answer yet. A says, recollection of past confidence to acknowledgement of present self-doubt. 
Here's the problem. I see no past confidence. In fact, it starts with a mistake. Mistakes don't give people confidence, okay? And so in the past, we had doubt. In the present, there is doubt. That's why I can't take A. B, a little better. Reflection on his expectation of life as a tradesman, yes. To his desire for another job, no. He's not desirous of another job. Maybe a better relationship with Edward Crimsworth, but he's not doing that. C, generalization. So I'll stop there. What is a generalization? Defining is important, so I'll do that here. A generalization is a broad statement. It's about many people or many things or many processes. A generalization often gets narrowed down to a specific. Is there a generalization here? Yes. No man, it begins, makes uh, or acknowledges that he's made a mistake. That's a big generalization because it's talking about every human, or every man at least. And then it says generalization about job dissatisfaction, fine, to the specifics of his own situation. Yes, he does that throughout the paragraph, his situation. Everything good. Gotta like C. But just in case you didn't like C, look at D, because we evaluate who is wrong. Here's the third wrong. Evaluation of factors making him unhappy to identification of alternatives. I'm okay with the first part, but once again, the second part lets us down. We'll convene on another video. Hope you'll hang with me.